All right, welcome to another camera off video. This is just way more convenient for me. And then you can see more of my screen, all the stuff over here. So uh, uh, I'm gonna move on with the LPIC uh, series. I'm trying to get that, pick up that cert. I think that's a good cert for me at this point in my career. Um, so these are the explorational exercises uh, in, uh, Lesson one, uh, section point two, which is all about system architecture, um, is the topic, and the subtopic is booting the system. And we're going to use Chat GPT version four, the paid version, as a personal uh, tutor. So we'll do that by copying the question. There we go. And then uh, using a, uh, uh, we're just going to do it with uh, with no plugins, uh, or anything like that. We're going to say, act as my LPIC, one tutor, use the Socratic method to teach me the answer to the following question okay and before i hit enter i will read the question the bootloader will present a list of operating systems to choose from when more than one operating system is installed on the machine however a newly installed operating system can overwrite the mbr of the disk erasing the first stage of the bootloader and making the other operating system inaccessible why would this not happen on a machine equipped with a uefi firmware so i'm going to think about this before i hit enter and come up with my own answer and we'll see if that's correct so okay so i guess one one answer is you don't have to have the EFI system partition on the same disk. You can have it uh, somewhere else. So like, it doesn't matter the hard disk that has the operating system on it. It doesn't matter that it's that it's on the same disk. Um, so I'm gonna go with that. We'll see if that's correct. Let's unpack this together. Firstly, can you briefly describe the difference between a BIOS, basic input, output system, and UEFI, unified extensible firmware interface, in terms of their roles as system-level software during the boot process? Uh, yeah, I can I can do that. So, um, yes, the difference between a BIOS um, and UEFI in terms of their roles as system level software during the boot process is that the BIOS requires the MBR requires the uh, first 440 bytes of a disk to be used to access the boot up files, whereas the UEFI can use a partition block that is set up on any disk as a partition on any bytes of the disk. Excellent explanation. You've highlighted that UEFI doesn't rely on the first 440 bytes of a disk like BIOS does. Instead, it uses a dedicated partition, known as the EFI system partition, especially, to store bootloader files. 
Now, think about what happens when you install a new operating system. With a BIOS-based system, why would installing a new operating system potentially override the master boot record, MBR, and potentially make other operating systems inaccessible? Yeah, so I'll answer that. So, with a BIOS-based system, installing a new operating system could potentially overwrite, oh, sorry, the master boot record, also known as the MBR, and potentially make other, oops, sorry, potentially make other operating systems inaccessible because, um, the disk where the operating system resides may have been reformatted so that the MBR no longer is usable no or exists at all that's mostly correct although the main concern is now that the disk may be reformatted entirely when you install an operating system on a bios based system it installs its own bootloader on the mbr this bootloader takes charge of the booting process if you have more than one os the new bootloader may not be configured to recognize or boot the existing operating systems Hence, you may not be able to access the other OSs, as they are not included in the bootloader's menu. Now, relating this back to UEFI, why would this issue of overriding not occur in the UEFI firmware system, even when a new operating system is installed? Okay, so I wasn't totally correct. Um, uh, so, the, the more correct thing is that when you install an operating system on a BIOS-based system, it installs its own bootloader on the MBR. This bootloader takes charge of the booting process. If you have more than, so, so like you only get one bootloader per OS. So like if you would install, it's like here, so, okay. I know, I know how to explain this. So let's say we have two OSs on the system. We have Windows and Linux. If you, have more than one OS you you on a on a BIOS based system you only get one bootloader and that bootloader might not be compatible with the other OS so my answer is since on a UEFI system the uh, boot files are on their own partitions, you can have multiple partitions, one for each of your operating systems, thereby overcoming the problem with BIOS systems where only one set of files can be used to boot the system, which can create compatibility issues if this single set of files is not compatible with each operating system you would like to boot. Boom. Yes, you're on the right track. UEFI uses an EFI system partition, especially where bootloaders for all installed operating systems reside. When you install a new OS on a UEFI-based system, the new bootloader is added to the ESP rather than overriding any existing bootloader, as would happen with the MBR and BIOS system. 
Can you elaborate on how UEFI firmware chooses which bootloader to use when there are multiple operating systems? Okay, so let, let me let me see this. So UEFI uses uses the partition instead of the the master root record, where bootloaders for all installed operating systems reside. When you install a new operating system with UEFI uh, system, a new bootloader is added rather than overriding. Okay, yep, so I have it for the most part. It's it's not that you have a partition for each operating system. It's that within that partition, you have files for each operating system. And that's not the case with the BIOS. You only have the master boot record and the master boot record is overwritten by different operating systems and not uh, it, it, as opposed to those files in the master boot record that are used to operate operate the operating system being appended to so so like being added to so like instead of adding more files to the folder that you use to boot up the operating system on a bios system you overwrite the files in the folder and you have to have a bootloader bootloader files that can boot each of your operating systems but the the problem is you only get one set of files on the on a uefi system you have the system partition and you can add as many files to to the folders as, as you have space for so you don't need to depend on one bootloader being compatible with all your operating systems you'd like to boot because you can just add multiple bootloaders and now now here's now here's the next question once you've added multiple bootloaders to uh your esp your efi system partition how does it know which bootloader to use so the uefi firmware chooses which bootloader to use when there are multiple operating systems through either user selection in the bootloader menu or through a configured default in the UEFI configuration utility. And that's my answer. I, I could be wrong. Hopefully if I'm wrong, uh, it'll be called out by this personal tutor I'm using, but honestly, this personal tutor is not that good. So we'll see what happens. Okay, and um, so let me let me give a, a uh, explanation of why I kind of had a pause there. So something went very, very, very wrong. Um, my uh, monitor turned itself off. Um, I don't know why that happened. I think what might have happened. So my computer's still on, which is good. 